Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, a quick keyboard repair. I'll just show you some of the keys. Many of the keys are not working on this keyboard, so hopefully we can deal with this. Hopefully it won't need a new membrane. Hopefully it's just a bit of dirt or corrosion or something got in there. But just pointing you at the screen here, if we're going to, uh, say, memory tests, I do, uh, where's it gone? 7 to do a manual memory test. So you enter address 7 C F. Sorry, FC. C's not working. B's not working. B's not working. N M. Yeah, characters there, dots and arrows and things like that. Yeah, some of the keys around there are working. But it's like most of the bottom row there is not. Some of the function keys seem to work. So anyway, I'm going to strip it down while I have a look inside. So hopefully this is one of the Mitsumi ones. Uh, it might not be. You can probably tell from looking at the underside of this straight away. It's got a green power light, I think. So that would make me think it's probably going to be a Mitsumi. Anyway, we'll just get all these screws out and then I'm going to carefully lift this off, leave the keys downwards like that, just in case there is anything stuck inside them, like springs or plungers or anything. So all the screws are off, I'm just going to carefully lift up this and hopefully not lose the membrane. Yeah, it's a membrane, thank goodness. And it's the Mitsumi one. So you can see the issue, can you see all the bits of dirt and stuff here? Hopefully we've not got a damaged uh, connection anywhere, but yeah, we'll just need to clean this up. So the way I'm going to clean this up is with a bit of uh, soap and water, it's like lightly diluted, uh, well heavily diluted uh, soap, uh, just like washing up liquid, just gently, gently, gently over the uh, membrane here, get all these bits of dirt, I'm checking it periodically to make sure I'm not pulling any of the carbon stuff off these connections, what you can, you can clean the individual carbon pads there with a little bit of IPA, but uh, yeah you don't want to go over the whole thing with IPA. You could actually create a problem if you did that. But if we just collect all this dirt up, yeah, some parts are more dirty than others. I mean, the fact there's a whole row of keys not working makes me think we've got a damaged trace somewhere. I was watching one of Hey Bert's videos recently. He said loads of green stuff can, came off. Can you see that? And I'm getting that, even with just some light soap here. Anyway, that's it. I'll just use the dry end now just to gently wipe over this and then what I will do is just inspect where the keys were an issue down here maybe just wipe the contacts very gently with some IPA yeah so instead of doing the ones on the membrane because they look absolutely perfect I'm just doing the ones here actually so I collected up any bits of fluff uh, there's a bit there actually so I'm lying yeah collecting up all the bits of fluff off that it's pretty clean Giving everyone a wipe, uh, put the uh, LED back in here because it flowed out and wipe the contacts on that just gently. So I'm just going to reassemble it and we'll give it a try. I'll put, uh, I don't know, several screws in and then just see what it's like before I commit to screwing it all back together. The membrane sort of centred itself there with that, that and the one over here. That's nice and straight, we'll just get the screws in. No it's not, strangely enough. So. We must have, I don't know, a damaged connection or something somewhere. That CVB, uh, you know, and the keys after it are not working. There's the issue. I'll show you. Just watch the end one. Short there, but just from the very edge to the end, got resistance. There's a little bit, I'll show you on macro a minute, worn off there. All the others are okay. It's mysterious though because it's occurred inside that connector there that would never be subject to you know, any movement or whatever, it's a bit bizarre really. Uh, I can probably uh, fix that, I've got some conductive silver or nickel paint and I'll just cover that a little bit there. I'll mask off the side pieces first and then just cover that a little bit of trace, let, let it dry and then give it a try. Yeah there you go, that second trace I've just covered it with a bit of uh, that conductive uh, paint there. Looks a bit uneven, but and some of it's going to get worn off as it gets pushed in, but hopefully the bit up here might still remain joined so that it works. Um, anyway, only time will tell. Might have to get a new membrane. So I tried some nickel conductive paint to start with. Now it's old stuff, so it might not be uh, setting very well, you know, in terms of its resistance, because I found there was still a resistance there. Well, these ones are like super low resistance, the other traces, this one wasn't. So I scratched a little bit of the uh, mask off here just to expose a little bit of the coppery sort of trace. So that's, that's something you can do. This comes off really easy. You just literally touch it with a sharp tool like this and it comes off. Uh, you can see I've got a piece of copper tape, uh, pins width there. I overlapped it on the uh, other side there so that when you push it in, it doesn't peel back. 
uh, and then I've put a tiny bit of the conductive ink there. I've ordered some more conductive ink. If that doesn't work, I'll try some of the new stuff because I, I think this, this is setting with a resistance of like a K or something. When I originally got this, it was setting to almost a short after it, you know, you left it for 10 minutes, it would be, you know, I don't know, several ohms. Whereas I, I measured a piece on the paper there and it's like 100K or something. So it's, yeah, it's not, um, I don't know what's happened. Maybe the metal part of it has settled in one side of the pen and set or something like that. I don't know. So we have progress. Let me just show you if I uh, measure from the connection there. Sure. Yeah, there you go. Could I hold it just the right spot? But that has worked. So the approach using copper for the majority of the trace seems like the best thing to do. We've got another thing. I've just worked out the, uh, uh, as well as this row here still not working. So that didn't solve that. But that relates to these keys here. So that's that fixed. Uh, I think we've got another issue because this key here is not working. And uh, I just traced the connection all the way. Where's it going now? Uh, down here, there's a, I've scratched a little bit off there and folded it around here and scratched a little bit off here and there's no join. So that trace there needs repl replicating, you know, repairing. When you're measuring pads, use the side of the tip there um, rather than the actual, you know, sort of stabbing into it because you're wet and don't rub because you wear the contact off. So try and hold it stable as you can and then measure. So for example, from here, I'm measuring, I'm getting 60 ohms at the moment, it's dropping because that's still drying. Um, and this is the way to test it. I've got, uh, swap the probes around. Uh, I can test from there. I exposed a little bit here. And again, if I hold it in just the right spot, yeah, 100 ohms at the moment. I did that one last. So it takes a good 20 minutes to set this stuff, but hopefully that'll fix it. There might be one more yet. That might not be the issue with the keys up this side, but the traces go all the way over there. So I'm thinking that might be it. I know this one works. If that one works, we're sorted. So did that fix it? Almost, I'll show you. We'll just go into a keyboard test. So I'm going to keyboard test number one. Uh, I've covered this ROM in terms of the memory testing side on one of the 2000 videos that's coming up shortly. And if we're going to full keyboard test, this is the nice thing with this. It gives you a representation of the keyboard there so you can see escape, F1, F2. And if I just go through these and press all these keys, you'll see that they all hopefully are working. Yeah, do really help? Well, apart from the ones I'm gonna leave right till the end. So this, the asterisk there, we fixed that. That was one of the traces. Uh, arrow keys, yeah, one of the arrow keys, the down wasn't working, that was fixed at the same time as one of the other ones, the asterisk, I think. Uh, so let's do the next row. Tab, yeah, that's working. To UIOP brackets, working, returns working. Um, this is where things get interesting. Control, well, control is, shift isn't, alt isn't, left omega isn't. Um, caps lock is, A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, blah, blah. blah. The mystery one there, the question mark, there isn't one on here. You know, I'm pressing the two keys that are next to each other, there is no question key. On the 2000, and I think on some of the 500s, you'll see like a blank key there, and you're like, what the hell's that? That's the mystery key. Uh, Z, X, C, V, V, and M. It's probably a better name for it, I don't know, that's what I call it. Uh, and the question mark fits. Uh, so as you can see, we're just left with a cluster of these here. And each one of those, I'll show you, is a separate bombing trace. There's like four or five traces. I thought the control wouldn't work, actually, but that seems to work now. Um, so we've just got three keys there that, while I've been testing, it's been fine not using those. But I'm going to have a go and see what I can do. But there is a problem, and I'll show you why. So let's take a look at the Blue Peter mods. Uh, there have been a few since the previous update. Um, so you saw the one down here, you saw the one up there, and then look down here, we had two here. Now, can you see these traces here? There's like five or six traces there. And look, can you see they look dark? Every one of those is an issue. And that's the problem, so I fixed two of them here. But then these are the keys that are not working. I think the control was, it was like these ones here. So again, they're ones that run across here. Now, this is the problem because it's an extended area. It's not just like a little bit of trace in the middle. It's like this whole bit here seems to have corroded the whole thing. You've got to get from over here somewhere to over there. Now, that's fine when you've just got one, but when you've got another, I've got another two or three to do of these now, I've got to somehow snake a piece of copper over to here and over to here, not get them to touch each other, 
Do you know what I mean? So this is the problem. I've gone after. So I don't know what to do. I mean, the thing is, this is flexible. So you could you could have a straight piece coming out and then fold it a little bit to go, you know, to, just to move it at an angle and snake it around. I could use thinner pieces of copper. I might have to do that to try and get some of these connections here over to. Uh, I think it's which one's it going to be? Yeah, that one fixes the bottom so it's going to be the top pad so it's going to be this pad this pad and this pad so i've got to get from one point on each of these connections i mean I can, these ones aren't so bad because let me think i can sort of make a little scratch there and then pull one so well this is the problem it gets in the way of the pads then do you see the dilemma this is the real issue with this i could sort of snake it up here across here and then uh, over here down here I mean, it's going to be a really long L-shaped piece of copper. And then I've got to try and get the other ones across there, the other two. Do you see the, the dilemma there? That is a pain, an absolute pain. When you've got small little breaks, it's not a problem. I mean, I could start scratching off some of this here to see if I can find out specifically where the break is. But it goes under these joins and stuff. So, mm, I'll report back in a minute. So, we're getting even more blue pizza here. Seriously, we are. Uh, and in case you're wondering, Blue Pizza, references to Blue Pizza within my videos. It was a, a kids' TV program in the uh, 80s and maybe some of the 90s. And one of the sections on that program, they used to make things out of household things, you know, like stick some toilet rolls together and uh, a few elastic bands and a cardboard cereal box and make a robot. <laughs> it's that sort of thing. So, yeah, this is a bit fudgy, you know, a bit Blue Pizza. Um, so you can see I've got a copper pad here, a soldered piece of uh, thin uh, coil wire, super fine, it's like th thinner than hair. Uh, so yeah, there's a bit of slack there, I wanted a bit of slack so I can move it so that it doesn't interfere with the mounts and things. But this will, I think this will do the job. So you can see I soldered it on there, didn't solder it when it's on the membrane, solder it on the mat, you know, put your piece of copper on the mat, solder your wire on, then remove the backing, which is very hard, and I put a piece of copper tape that small, and then stick it on. Uh, measure your wire, you know, try and get it roughly the right size and yeah, it's a bit longer than I wanted but anyway same thing down here, solder, a very small amount of solder there actually but the copper is there and it's stuck down so the next thing I need to do is just, uh, you know, use some of this uh, conductive nickel ink again and uh, I've scratched off a little bit of the trace here and a little bit of the trace there and just join them up we'll leave it for a few minutes to dry and I'll test it if that works for that one key uh, I think it's going to be this one here, which is the Amiga key, isn't it? I should be able to do the uh, control Amiga, Amiga to reset it, actually. That'll be a good test. Then I just need to do it for these two remaining keys up here. I'll do the same thing. Because, as I say, trying to get a piece of copper from one of these points here, yeah, to over here, when you've got all this stuff in the way, it's impossible. But, uh, you know, just using, I can, you know, scratch off a bit here, have a little pad. Scratch off a little bit here, have a little pad. Wires, wires, you know, it'll be far, far easier. I wouldn't want to sell this keyboard, but I'll be honest, I think this will be reliable. I think you'd have to hammer it pretty hard for this to become uh, a problem. Because I've done similar repairs, as I say, on other keyboards in the past, and the long, uh, they can last a long time. And there we have it. It looks uh, a bit of a mess. The one thing I would say is I could have shortened these wires, you know, I was trying to just do it by eye, and then when it came to put them on, you know, there's a lot of slack. But the benefit of that, it means you can, you know, position them away from little holes like this here. What I might just do, actually, once I've confirmed this is working, is just hold them down like that, I stick a little piece of sellotape just over there. You could stick a piece of sellotape over each of these that you've fixed as well. But the thing I would, the po one thing I would point out there is if you ever needed to rejoin it, or you know you're gonna have a problem pulling the tape off is gonna destroy it all and maybe do some more damage so I would put the tape very super carefully just in the places where you know you're not gonna to need to be working but I will secure these four wires with a piece of tape just maybe across there or something to hold them uh, down but they won't interfere and the solder blobs other than that one there being uh, slightly large won't be a problem because if you look at the underneath of the plastic part here can you see these are raised, there's like a raised part just around all of the keys and the screw mounts. So all of this, air, all the area here, for example, is not a problem. You've got a, a mount that goes around that key there, one that goes around that key there. So there is lots of space for bits of solder and the wires and stuff. Nothing's going to interfere there. Uh, here, I might just need to just move that wire up. Just do this a bit. 
I'm going to just bend that weight up a little bit before I tape it down like that. Um, but I think that'll work. I've tested the other, th th I've done these three keys here. I've tested the first two dead short because it's been set for 10 or 20 minutes. Just waiting for this last one here now. I think this is the, um, which key is that? It's this one here, this corner key, whatever that is. Um, as soon as that one has set, we should be good. I mean, I can show you this from the pads to the copper traces over here. That's not a conclusive test because you don't know whether it's joined to the trace on this side. But if I do this first one here, for example, just very lightly, uh, I forget which one it is, is it that one? It's that one. Yeah, uh, and then the one of uh, which one? Yeah, that's the one I've just done. Let's see if that measures as a short now. Yep, yeah, it does. Uh, and then this one, which was that pad there, very gently. Yeah, and that one's joined as well. You can see, you know, even just holding the, the, the meters probes on there very lightly, you start to wear it off. You've got to be super careful doing this. But you might ask why, why would I go about doing this? Why not just buy a new membrane? Well, that did cross my mind. The first thing I did last night was have a look on um, eBay and the like 20 to 30 quid for a membrane. Well, you can buy it. This keyboard only cost me 25 pounds. Why am I going to spend the same again just for a membrane? It's crazy. So it's perhaps worth the time for me to do this. Uh, and as I say, it's just going to be a test keyboard anyway. But I will guarantee this will last. So I'm not 100% uh, set yet, but let's just do a full keyboard test. Now bear in mind, it's not even screwed together this, so some of the keys might be an issue. But anyway, we'll just test those ones, those are all right. So the ones are just fixed. Shift, Alt, Left, Amiga. There we go, it's working. Control, yeah, Caps Lock, Space. So we're all sorted, all done. Problem solved. There's an interesting left arrow there next to the shift, can you see it? I don't see that, it's not on the keyboard, so that might be another key that you might get on some keyboards and not others. Um, but anyway, yeah, every key is working. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to see very well there, uh, just a couple of pieces of sellotape here. Uh, I'm just making sure it's as flat and stuck down as it can be over those points there. But you can see it's just holding the wires there, and then I've got another piece over here. Uh, sorry, I'm awfully close to the mic there. Um, technically, I could, have, I could have a bit up here as well, but you know, I don't want to interfere with that further. I know it works perfectly, uh, and I'll guarantee that will work for a period of time. It's only maybe if you flex the keyboard, you might have a problem. You know, if it had an impact, you could damage something there. But uh, yeah, I think I'll uh, live to see uh, a good number of years. So it's amazing the things you find <laughs> if you look through bins. Uh, yeah, I do pretty much all the housework in this house. I do everything like washing, cleaning, vacuuming, ironing, changing the sheets, toilet cleaning, washing up, drying, pretty much everything. Anyway, so I was emptying the waste paper baskets uh, upstairs actually in the bathroom and my wife had had a clear up, a clear out. And you can see, uh, yeah, I said up because I read the up there. Uh, yeah, clear out. You can see it was a brand new makeup brush here. It was sealed in a plastic bag. There was loads of stuff actually, uh, eyeliners and lip glosses and all sorts of stuff, all brand new, never used in a bin, full, it was able to be full of makeup. I was looking, uh, just because I saw the makeup, I thought, oh, what if there's any nail polish in there, you know, but there wasn't, that was the only thing she hasn't thrown away. But so yeah, I found this and I thought, what can I use this for, it's, you know, uh, I don't like throwing things away. Um, I could have sold it on eBay, I guess, it was brand new. But uh, I thought, yeah, it's a super soft brush for certain cleaning things like this. I don't want to go over this with cotton buds and things again because it's going to, you know, you're going to create some damage, but it's super soft. So any of the particles have been scratching off here. Um, yeah, I can wipe over this now and get those off without doing any damage to it. So yeah, I'm quite pleased I managed to grab that actually. No doubt she'll moan when she sees it. What are you doing with my brush? And I'm like, well, it was in the bin. So finally, we'll just uh, get the uh, thing screwed back together. I need to do this from the other side just to make sure it's all correctly aligned and stuff, which yeah, it seems to be. You've got the notches through here. So I'll just get all the screws in and then I'll vacuum the top of the keyboard. Technically, you might want to go a step further and take all the keycaps off and clean them, but they're pretty clean on this actually. I'll just wipe over it. I'm not going to be bothered. It's just for testing. Uh, next time on Makeup with Gadgets, I'll show you how to use uh, lip gloss to fix floppy drive. Uh, I am of course kidding. Uh, Maybe I'm not. Uh, there might be a use for that somewhere. <laughs> One of these boards, caps lock, A, S, D, S, G, A, T, K,
yep all sorted I am so pleased it's a minor miracle really that I managed to get everything working on this keyboard there we go all done so it's had a quick wipe over as you can see in a hoover and uh, yeah it's come up really well the one telltale sign is that bit of copper there can you see uh, one thing that I noticed at the end when I came to editing I had no examples of me scratching the surface off the little traces there so I'm going to show you a, a replica thing here I've got a EV blog ruler here with a bit of nail polish and I'm just going to show you the technique of how you scratch it off with uh, something uh, like a meter probe and in fact that's what I was using I was using one of these sharp meter probes here and it's just a case of getting on the surface and just you know the trace and just scratch very gently sideways and you can see the copper below if you were to go at it you know like a bull in a china shop and scratch that direction like that put lots of pressure on you would scratch straight through the copper because it is very very thin uh, it's a very thin layer and you'd go straight through the membrane but once you've exposed that copper you know what I was doing is going using the copper tape there cut into strips you know you could make it I could have done some of them thinner that's one thing one observation I would make some of those strips there could have been thinner and that would have made it a little bit easier but uh, yeah it's a case of having that copper from you know one point to another and then scratch off just next to the copper on each side and then obviously the conductive ink was joining the copper to the connection that's far easier than having a big long streak of uh, conductive ink you know you could try painting an entire trace because some of the bits that were worn they were about that long in length you know they were all of the trace was dark now you could have scratched some of that off there and found the, the exact break and just put a little blob of conductive ink over that but all the rest of the trace was uh, changed color so it would fail again super soon does that make sense you know it's worn at that point the point where you've got the dark traces on the PCB those are worn so you've got to replace you've got a piece that long you've got to replace the whole blooming thing yeah so that's dried now so just imagine there's a trace you know this is protecting the trace going underneath and it's just a case of putting the probe on very at a slight angle onto the surface and just doing that can you see that little bit I just got off the bottom there it comes off that easy you do it's not like you need to go scratch 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 you don't I'll do it again in the middle there you just literally put the probe on and just slide to the side and the, the protective covering comes off like that you might have to go over it maybe two or three times but you will get the covering off and it will be copper underneath but if you press too hard too much force you will damage the copper there I didn't do that at all on, the, on this keyboard which is amazing really I didn't damage uh, any of the bits of copper on there but that's all the approach was really just you know scratch it off so you've got a bit of copper stick your copper tape next to it you know if you if you solder in a wire on like I did do that off the membrane and then when you've got the the wires soldered onto your two bits of copper then stick your bits of copper next to the bit you've exposed off there where that's gold you know that'll be golden and then you can just put your conductive ink over the top of the copper and this point here to join it up you've got a very short distance then for that conductive ink to you know join to the copper that's next to it and here's that copper tape that I use it's uh, they call it slug repellent you know the idea is it's got a sticky backing and it's very very thin this it's like a very a thin film of conductive copper super conductive you know you put your meter across there you'll have a dead short but you can cut this to size it's designed for protecting against slugs you cut a piece off and you stick it around your plant pot there the neck of the plant pot and slugs for whatever reason don't like copper or it has some sort of reaction to the slime that they produce I think so they don't like it um, or it kills them one of the two uh, but you can you know just cut little pieces of this off strips etc uh, so yeah that's what I used the good thing is with this stuff there are multiple uses you know I've repaired lots of things using this copper tape um, it can be useful for sticking onto things to add a bit of extra ground you know shielding over certain things you know to protect against noise and things like that but I've had this roll for uh, several years now and it cost me I don't know three or four pounds it's amazing how long it's lasted so I do hope you found the video interesting please like share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video